about your uh, assistant head coach, though? That's what they say. How'd that come about? <laughs> Um, I think that's just through conversations between me and Coach Pry on, uh, you know, what I aspire to be uh, eventually in my career, and uh, is also uh, trust, belief, uh, growth, uh, and loyalty. What changes uh, with you in that role? Do you, do you sit in on more stuff? Does he um, ask you about more stuff? How's that work? Yeah, we're working through that. I think that's um, you know me being involved a little bit more on the side of leadership council, just me being in front of. Uh, you know, different people is that, you know, Wid and uh, John Blinn and Danny White and, you know, just, you know, being another eye and set of ears uh, for Coach Pry. So you say that's a long-term goal to be a head coach. Yeah. Uh, how, do you, how do you get to, I mean, I guess there are different paths that you could take to yeah. get to that, go a coordinator route, but this probably right. helps, I would imagine. Yeah, and I think, you know, the most important thing is I just want to be with my feet off. Uh, I just want to make sure I'm coaching the receivers to the best of my ability and, uh, recruiting the footprint in the state of Virginia and make sure my guys are being developed. Uh, that's first and foremost. And I think anything other than, I think anything beyond that that Coach Pry feels he trusts me with, uh, I'm willing to do. How much does it help that J.C. Price is associate head coach or assistant yeah. head coach? And I guess you don't have to take on all the responsibility right. of the assistant right. head coach. Uh, it's just a group of guys that, you know, coach trust and believe in and is being loyal to and, uh, you know, JC has a really unique perspective and his, his view being an alum here and, you know, obviously taking over the team, uh, doing the coaching change and, you know, being a veteran and coaching. And it's always just about upward mobility and being able to learn and grow uh, from guys that you're around every day. Do you feel like you have, like, your offensive recruiting coordinator, position coach, assistant head coach, do you feel like you have to change hats every day or is it just focus on what your main responsibilities are and then try to gradually bring you into the system? Yeah, I'm just going to continue to be who I am. Uh, being who I am has gotten me to where I am right now. Uh, I'm not going to change. I'm going to be transparent. I'm going to be honest. Uh, I'm going to be passionate about what I do, whatever that is. I'm going to make sure my guys are being developed. Uh, continue gonna cr to recruit uh, as heavily and relentlessly as we can. Um, like nothing changes uh, other than, you know, the title. When did those conversations start with Coach Pry about this role and what you aspire to be? I think it just happens throughout, you know, conversations on the road or, you know, just when you have them in personal time, recruiting. Um, and it's always good to have a goal on what you aspire to be in 10 years and five years, whether you're a coach or whether you're a player. Uh, we all have goals that we want to work towards, and that's always been a goal of mine. And I just appreciate Coach Pry and uh, Witt and John Boleyn and Danny White believing me enough to uh, award me with that opportunity. When you're, like, watching somebody or, or trying to get those skills to be a head coach. What, what do you notice is different between what the head coach does and what you have to, or how you talk or how you coach as a position coach? You know, I think it's, it's pretty neat that I've had a chance to work around or with whether coach or player a really lot of established guys and veterans in the coaching profession. And you want to be able to pull a little bit from every single guy that you've been around. And that's offensive coordinators, that's defensive coordinators, that's assistant coaches. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, Coach Pry is a really big believer in doing it his way. Um, I think that's something he's always said. He wants an opportunity. When he got his opportunity to be a head coach, he wants to do it his way. Uh, and that's something I really believe in. And that's something that I model myself after. And, uh, you know, like I mentioned, I just, I'm, I'm happy and I'm excited and I'm blessed that him and I are both aligned. You uh, worked with Ricky Bonney, I believe, for yeah. a year. Yeah. Came from the same coaching as James Franklin. Tree. Yeah. What did you glean from him? Uh, a lot of similarities, but very different as well. Uh, Ricky was an offensive guy. Coach Pry is a defensive guy. Um, obviously, a lot of similarities were both from Penn State and Coach Franklin. Uh, all three really, really good coaches in their own way. Um, they all three are very organized and detailed. Um, it's just the, you know, the ins and the outs and the day-to-day -day work and, and schedule and, and office that you just kind of learn and uh, they're a little bit different, but uh, all similar in a lot of ways, but all really three really talented coaches. When did you realize in your coaching career that you wanted to aspire to be a head coach? I think that's something that gradually happens. Um, I've never really sat down when I first started coaching. When I first started coaching, I just wanted to be the best coach that I could be for my position group. And I think the longer you're in it, uh, the more you just want an opportunity uh, as time comes eventually to have a chance to run your own program. Uh, but like I mentioned, man, I'm like, I'm really just where my feet are right now. Uh, I'm the receivers coach first. Uh, um, I'm recruiting second. Uh, assistant head coach rules, uh, rules du uh, duties third.
How the receivers look so far in spring? Uh, getting better. Uh, getting better. The standard is high. Um, those guys demand excellence uh, every single day. We want to be relentless on the perimeter blocking. Uh, I've got a lot of talented guys and veteran guys coming back. Uh, I've got some young guys right now who who brains are starting to spin a little bit with uh, installs and just being a college athlete. And there's a lot of stuff going on, uh, but this is the best thing for him. I've got some guys that are really stepping up. Um, excited about Aiden Green. I think he's really developed. He's he's mature. Uh, he's confident. Um, and he wants to help this team in any way possible. So we've got some competition going on in that room, and that's going to make us all better. Did you see seeds of that last year with Green? I know he didn't get a ton of playing time, but it, it seemed like when we saw him in practice, absolutely, you know, be a pretty absolutely. Guy out there. Yeah, he's a guy that's not afraid of the moment. Um, he is. He's a guy that wants more. That's aspiring to be more. I actually moved him inside. Uh, to play a little bit of slot receiver just to really involve his game. So he's taking reps behind Jay Lane right now, and he's, he's learning the ins and outs of playing that position from him. Uh, but he's a guy that has a really good feel now, finally, for the offense, and now that's allowing him to play faster. Uh, so when you know more, you can play faster, right? When you're confident, you can play faster. And I think he's just, you know, showing his teammates uh, that he's ready to step up and play on Saturdays. We saw some video of uh, Kyron went down to, to South Florida, yeah. and he's got Ali there and yeah. on with him. You, yeah. What do you see? What do you think uh, as a receivers coach when you see your guys go down there <laughs> working out at Miami's facility and stuff oh, like that? Man. But yeah, they look like they're getting good work. Uh, I love it, man. I mean, th those guys were very transparent and honest in their communication before they went. I love those three. They, they work, man. That's what they do. They're looking for any opportunity to get better. They're looking for opportunities to pick guys' brains. Uh, I'm all for it. I'm not an ego guy. I'm very humble, love learning. So anybody that I can learn from or they can learn from to get something to help their game, I'm all for it. Is that a, a, a detail that sometimes people might overlook is just – quarterbacks, receivers on the same page. Yeah. How much more do you think that helps this year with drones as the guy instead of he's just getting here and still kind of learning yeah. the system like last year? Yeah, I think it just gives everybody in that room a little bit of confidence and reassurance of, you know, this is the guy that we're going to rally behind. This is the guy who is – who is QB1 and has proven himself. And uh, they want to take every opportunity they can to make sure they're getting the timing and the reps. And, you know, this is this is when you see the success, you know, in the season. This is when you get better. Uh, this is when those guys are having an opportunity to put one foot in front of the other uh, and make sure that it's all a part of raising the standard of what that room is and what the expectations are. Right? If you want to be all conference, if you want to win bowl games, if you want to win the ACC championship, right, we got to win phase two. And that starts right now with what we're doing every single day. With Ali going down there to Florida, was that a sign that he's really itching to get back out there after what happened last season? Yeah, I think it's great for him. I mean, I think I may have told you guys, this will be Ali's first full spring practice since he's been in college. Uh, being healthy going into it, uh, he's had a chance to go through winter. He's had a chance to now go through a couple spring practices. So it's about kind of getting the kinks out. All right, but it's also about he's got some stuff to prove. He's, he's still got to prove himself. Uh, and I think he knows that. I know that. That's the message to him. Um, Ali is humble enough, and he's a hard worker. And he's an intelligent player. Uh, but he knows right now, right, I played one game. All right, I played one game. All right, so I got to go out there every day and prove myself to my coaches and my teammates. I think we're talking to Jalen Lane here come up after you. What have you seen out of him this spring? And uh, what, what areas do you think he can, he can really take a step forward in? He's gotten stronger. Uh, he's gained a little bit of weight. I think he's pushing about 200 pounds right now. Uh, he's becoming more of a vocal leader. Um, just great, great opportunity after practice. Uh, we usually each individually have a chance to speak to our guys. And uh, him and Quan just grabbed the guys, and they took them over to the side, and they had a message they wanted to say. I love that. I love that because when you have a team that's player-led versus coach-led, Right now, you're in the right direction. Right, so it's those guys pushing pushing each other instead of us always having to be on their butts and pushing them to do this and do that. When the demands come from your peers, it's a different feeling. Is that something you felt like he would have been comfortable doing last year? Is that the you know he's been here a year? Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, you know it's a feel of all three of those transfers, man. I think. They were a little hesitant to really step out into that leadership role last year, being new guys and being transfers, and they were welcomed with, with open arms. So it's not that. I think it's more so they wanted to make sure, hey, I'm going to prove myself of who I am as a player, as a worker, all right? and now I can really take that next step into the leadership role 
and expand, you know, what I am and who I am to the program and the team. Ethan got snow on there. He's not dressed, but it seems like he's moving around pretty well. Is he progressing where you guys hope he would be? It's hard to keep that dude down, man. Um, him and his brother, they're fighters, they're grinders, they're workers. Um, I can't say enough great things about just who he is as a person, uh, who he is as a player, what he means to that room. Uh, he's really the glue guy. Uh, he, he keeps us together. Uh, he keeps us all focused. Um, he's a quiet leader, uh, but he's a leader in his own right. So uh, just seeing him up and moving around and being involved is, is, is awesome for us in Virginia Tech football.